All right, guys. So again, uh, let me draw your attention real quick, right? And just hit safe wherever you you're at. Uh, and and again, uh, take a take a little pause from what you're doing. Take a sip of your coffee right there. Um, which we're gonna... And uh, and just uh, again, worry about the the notes and the procedure, right? Um, and, uh, and and hopefully this this will help you. Right, the idea is that this helps you a little bit. Um, so we should have our layers, right? I cannot stress enough, right? How important, right? Layers are, right? So let's see. Okay. And grouping, right? Grouping is also helpful, right? In this case, I have grouped the the floor plan, and I'll show you what I have real quick, right? I started tracing some of this as well, some of these drawings. Uh, um, you know, kind of uh, try to get into the assignment as well, right? So I, I have drawn here a little bit of the bottom floor and um, of course the, the classroom, right? And then uh, also just uh, enough of the, um, the, um, the second floor, right? And I guess I was gonna look for some, uh, some photographs or just have some photographs uh, available for us. Um, let's see, which again, you should have those, um, you know, with you as well, uh, just referencing, right? Just the uh, explorer is being kind of funny right now, but let's see, that, that's a good one, right? So again, right now for, for moving stuff, um, I have grouped, right? I'm going to actually ungroup, ungroup, I ungroup both of this, right? Uh, so I want to change this real quick. Remember a quick way. Because uh, I, I see that, that some of you guys are working, since you guys are working with your partners, right? Perhaps the layers were not assigned uh, before you guys started. And there's some uh, uh, sort of a reconciliation to do in terms of layers, right? I mean, making sure that the layers match, right? Uh, so there's actually a command called match layer, right? Match layer that you can select. Well, first, uh, I need to get a, get a target right here. So I'm going to change that object's layer, right? So that should be Windows right there. Once I have a, a target, right, let's say that I, I want to uh, change the, the rest of the windows, right, match layer, right, enter, uh, select the objects, right, for layer change, right, that guy right there, that right there, let's say that right there, enter, and then select the object and the layer to match, which is that, that orange right there. So again, your selections are big, big friends right here. Right, so for example, I can do that big O selection right there, press a uh, space bar, uh, and then to match on this layer, and that's it. Now I can change those right away. Uh, I can change all of this ones right here, should be under my um, column layer. And there you can see how they pop, immediately how they pop. Don't forget I'm holding shift right now and I can add to my selection. Right, I'm adding all those columns right there onto the uh, layer menu right here to the bottom right changing on to columns right we have those right there and um, for, for right now those are good well I guess I can I can change all of this ones right here right so that they, they go on to the right layer it should be windows as well right don't forget uh, for your windows right uh, to have um, at least both both of the vertical members right the ones that, that run vertically it's from the floor perhaps not all the way to the ceiling but you know some height right and then we have our glass panel right there and then we have our our a rail which that would be seen you know all the way down right it's the one that is uh, in some cases most cases for us right here in this building hitting the floor right um also right, i'm going to draw this this lines right here uh, i'm going to go into my column grid layer right uh and, and again it's really important right whenever we get into um um what's it called uh post-production right and and, and and line weight assignment etc etc to um have different layers so that you can uh facilitate right the assignment of such uh properties such as the line weight and the um line type whether that's a dash line, etc., etc. All right. So it's also important that you're keeping track of your alignments, right? 
Uh, and by that, right, I mean that your bottom floor, right, which is this guy right here, aligns with the one on the second floor. Right? So I can draw a line, right? And that brings us there, right? As close as possible, right? Uh, we can see that that's not 100% perfect, right? But I think for, for our purposes at this moment right now, uh, that's fine. It's a quarter of an inch off. And remember, what is this What is this outline that I have there? What is that box that I have there? The second floor, right? Particularly, it, it's the second, the second, uh, actually, that's right, right? The second floor, right? I think about the, the floor that we're on right now. If you, if you really... So we're gonna get into representation, right? And and and, and your and your reading already talked about it, right? But uh, it's really important, right, to show the objects that are above you, right? Uh, the same way, right? That for example, uh, that outline right there, it's the uh, perimeter. You can call it a perimeter of the second floor, right? That right now it's on a solid line, but later on it will be switched onto a dashed line, right? Same way. This right here, what is this space right here? The, 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 the atrium, right, which is in the in the lobby, right? That, that's on the, in the lobby. Um, now you might see right, that right now I'm copying some lines, right? That's the projection of the, uh, the bridge, right? Now, why do I have a bridge on the, say, on the first floor drawing? if it's technically on the second floor, right? Well, for the same reason that I have this outline here, right? That it, we need to show that above us, right? There's actually an opening, right? That, that there's, a, there's, a, there's a double height, if you will, right? So these lines that I have there will eventually turn into dashed lines. And these are all things that I will mark, right? And they will, we will talk about uh, when you print your drawings. Right, so that that's why it's really important actually to to have your your, your printed drawings, right? It's not only uh, uh, just uh, for submission sakes, but it's also so that we can learn from them, and I can make certain observations um, based on and on what you have so far, right? Uh, uh, match it there, All right? So. Um, a few things right, that, that I wanted to uh, talk about as we print and, and uh, also as we work on these, um, these elevations. Right? So let me just uh, clean this up a little bit, just trim, clean that up, right? Because uh, these ultimately are separate drawings, right? They're different drawings. So move this right, right there. Right? And we align it there right we turn on all of this uh points on right which F on the software i guess the command for that would be uh point on right since right now i cannot use my f10 there we go right and it turns on my my points right there i can select them i can use my gumball right there to move them and adjust them there right select this other ones right there uh, point on right uh, again, I cannot stress enough how in, how uh, how much it helps to be able to um, you know turn the points on enough, just like you guys did on your on your lap sick you know, those funky waves and that uh, what's it called like a little wine cup or something, just a cup, uh, etc. Right now, I'm not done with my layer assignment. Uh, let's get into printing since, since that's what the what, uh, what we need to um, you know it out right now so the command for that would be print I right, type print then we get our print set up right it's a dialog box uh, and, and you might might be familiar with it already or with the similar programs right even illustrator has one and and, and uh, even you know 
PowerPoint, right, or any software. Um, as, a, as a destination, right, we want to create a PDF, right? Um, something that perhaps we are used to or that we have done is that, for example, for your logos, right, you might have taken an Illustrator file to the, to the printing center, and, and they, they can open a, a, an Illustrator and a, and a Photoshop file, and they might be able to print from there. It's not ideal, though. Right, you might run into issues with the, the versions, right, being compatible. But particularly when you're working with CAD software, you know, whether it be in AutoCAD or Rhino or you know Revit, any of the softwares, those are not as common, right, in print shops, and they may not have it. So you take them a Rhino file, and they're gonna look at you as like, well, how do I open this, right? And you'll be like, well, I don't know. You tell me. You're the one that works here, and it's like, yeah, I do, but I just print. I mean, we just sprint. We don't. We don't draft right here. We don't cat, right? So that, that's what you. And again, you, you you rarely right want to email someone right unless it's, it's asked right for a, a a AutoCAD file or a Rhino file, especially to a client right that that, that that does not have the software right. If you're working with a colleague or you're working with a consultant, well, well they will ask you for the CAD files right as a background. You tell me your CAD files right, just like you guys are sharing right now. Uh, with your with your classmates right with your partners so again long story short just make sure that whenever you're going to uh, print uh, rhino or any uh let's say drawings right you use a pdf even if you're working with illustrator right? even if you're working with photoshop turn it into a pdf because pdf readers are are free right and and not only are they free they're they're compatible with the uh, multiple softwares right you can create a pdf with anything from excel to word powerpoint to Illustrator, AutoCAD, et cetera, et cetera. So long story short, destination, Adobe PDF. Now the size, right? And, and again, your screen might be a little bit different, but uh, it's a good uh, time to start getting familiar with some of these uh, uh, sizes, right? Some of which you might already recognize. Um, tabloid, right? Your tabloid is your 11 by 17, right? That's, that's tabloid, right? Uh, letter size this is your letter size right well how big is the letter size eight and a half by eleven right correct uh, a ledger to be honest with you I have no idea right? but it looks like that whatever that is right legal right it's uh, a little bit bigger than the letter size there is the same width but it's longer right it's a little bit um, not used that much actually anymore but uh, the ones that you will for sure be using, right, is of course letters and tabloid. Now, from there, right, you will be asked, right, part of it in this project and actually your logos, right? You guys remember the size of your the, the board right there outside? Huh? That is correct, right? That is correct, April. It was 24 by 36. Does anyone know the name of that kind of paper? Huh? That is correct. Good job. Good job. Uh, that is Arch D, as in David. All right, Arch D. Arch D is 24 by 36. All right, um, and and that's the one that that uh, that we'll be using right now. Just know, right, that that um, let's see. We go to properties, paper quality, right. There you go. Just know that you know when you hear 24 by 36 and you're like, I don't see it right here. It's your Arch D, right? Which are the most used now. You may get right into some uh, custom sizes, right? Uh, if you guys, I know my my morning class or my studio classes, right? We went to see the projects downstairs at the lobby for Studio Three, Professor Mireles class, right? Those are bigger boards, right? Those are larger boards. Those were, however, uh, laid out. Uh, the final board itself on Illustrator, right? Um, so, so we don't have to worry about that. Um, but any, anyway, uh, we'll, we won't get into custom sizes right now here on Rhino, but uh, we'll work with HD. Now, as you can see, right, it gives me a preview of how things are looking. Now, we want to do based on the on the size and form and shape of a building. Want to do a landscape, right? That already changes things. Right. It also matters how you're drafting, right? And, and by that I mean that I think uh, as I walked around, I think most of you guys and most of the class have the building like like this, right? Kind of like the long way uh, from left to right. I, I don't think I've seen anyone working with it rotated, you know, vertically. Which um, it 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 doesn't matter for Rhino 
largely, right? It, it's just uh, pure um, how you work better, right? Now, let's see. Um, output type, right? Vector or raster, right? Um, I would recommend anytime that you are going to do this that you do vector, right? Vector is a line base, right? And any software that is line based uses vectors. That would be AutoCAD, Rhino, and Illustrator, right? Uh, that means that you potentially are are able to open a PDF on Illustrator, right? And you can actually edit the lines inside. So that's very helpful. If you do raster, it just create generates a PDF that is uh, image based. Right, and you cannot edit uh, anything in, in. Well, you can edit it, but it would be Photoshop or pixel based, right? Um, so, so vector output, definitely, right? Vector, vector should be. Um, right now, let's do black and white, since we're not setting line weights yet. We're not setting uh, line types yet. Um, so, so, so again, it's gonna it's gonna turn all black lines. Right? So it's gonna be a little bit. Maybe a little bit messy for right now, because because uh, again there's no line type, so all of the lines are going to be continuous or solid lines. Now output and scale, view and output scale, right? Uh, here you can see right is a top view, right? I can print a, a, a pers uh, sorry a um, a front view, which I don't have anything. I can even print my perspective, right? Uh, of course, most likely, right? You will be drawing. Your floor plans on your top view, all right? So I won't I won't mess with it. So it's top view. Now, what is crucial next, right? Is um, the next part, right there. So window, right? You can see what it does, right? Extends, right? But we actually want to draw a window, right? And I'll repeat this, right? And actually, I'm going to turn off my O snap. Oops, right? And I'll draw a window. Right. Um, repeat that. And so we go to you and output skill, right? You want to create a, a window, you hit on set, right? And it created a window for me. And that right there is the, the page size and I'm scaling it up. Right. So I wanna I wanna print whatever is inside of that. Right? Now the next thing that I, I want to set up is the scale. Right? Because right now it says scale to fit. Right? So the first thing that we do is set up your your paper size, right? Um, and then the, the window, right, if you want to print, and then the scale. Now the scale, if you click on that drop down menu, right, scale to fit, it's neat, right? Because it gives you all these different scales from uh, you know uh, uh, engineering, right, or decimal, uh, to our fraction or imperial, right? Uh, and you can test because so, sometimes, sometimes, right? Um, you're not sure, right? Well, how big can I print this? Well, for the most part, you want to print this as big as you can, right? But you need to check your scales, right? So, so let's see. So if I select one, 128 equals a foot, right? That's pretty. That's pretty large scale. Meaning I can fit a lot. I can fit a lot there. Look, really tiny the building. I can uh, bump it up, right? That was 1 to 128, which is the smaller one. 1 32nd, right? 1 8th, Arturus is 1 8th, that's 1 16th, right? 3 32nds, right? And 1 8th, it's like barely fits, right? It's like, like just about, just enough. That if you, if we were to have a, a um, title block on the sheet, it wouldn't really fit, right? You guys remember from Studio, right? Drawing your little box around it, right? And think about a place to add a title, a place to add potentially your logos, right? So, so that that's tight, right? So, so perhaps that's the 332nd, right? I think we can do that one, right? 332nd, and that's gonna give us room, right, to uh, add a title block later on. Now, once you have set up your scale. Right, based on the the page that you're working with, you can go back and reset your window, right? And what I mean by that, right? Uh, if you go back and click on right view under view and output skill, there's window. You can go back and click on set, right? Now notice on my command line, right? There's this option of move. Right? I can click on that, 
right? And then I go on to my work uh, workspace and click and I can move. And that right there that you see a little bit uh, lighter color, right? That it, what, what is that? Huh? Yeah, right, correct. That, that, that's, the, that's the paper, right? Blown up into that size with that scale. So, so I can print, I can position it. I can position my drawing anywhere inside of that, right? And, and, and again, perhaps we want to center it, right? We want to position it uh, in a particular way. Maybe we want to send it all the way to the right because you have a title block. Uh, for right now, I'll just center it, right? So we can place it there. Right click to enter, right? Or exit. I'm gonna uh, send this guys back up right there. Uh, from there you have your margins, right? Uh, line types and line widths, uh, which uh, we'll, we'll get into later on, right? And even visibility, right? What do you want to to appear or not? Right? I can set up my background color to show, right? Uh, locked objects, print locked objects or not? Print my grid. Right, grid axis, etc., etc. For right now, I won't mess with those. Right, it's not really necessarily these drawings that we're doing right now. They're just a progress. Right? So just progress. So remember, what page am I generating right now? I'm doing our 24 by 36, right, Arch D. So I go on to print, and uh, this window, right, very familiar. Any other software, right? We're prompted by this. Uh, three things, right? Remember location name and file type it's already a pdf i'll select my desktop for right now uh let's call this you can call this uh floor plans four plans uh, 24 by 36 actually we can call this floor plan progress plans progress 24 by 36 we go ahead and click save and uh, I'm not really sure I, yep it does it does give you the it does open at least in my case it opened um, uh, Acrobat as soon as um, it was done right and that right there is your your page right there and that's all we need for right now right, these drawings are gonna look way different but we're starting somewhere right, we start somewhere uh, I am going to minimize this. I'm going to repeat, right? Right click. Now I'm going to change my paper size, right? Since right now uh, I like us to print 11 by 17, right? Today, right? And I'm going to select 11 by 17, right? That tableau right there. What happened? All the scales not working. Right now it's now it's too big, right? Too big. So so what can we do about that? Well, let's see. Let's go back to our scale, right? 330 seconds not working. What? Uh, I'm sorry. 330 seconds was not working. 116, right? Getting there. 130 second. Uh, so, so that's kind of uh, small. Perhaps in this case, even I wouldn't mind, right? Uh, doing our window, right? So I'll set up our our custom scale, right? Custom. Right, and that means that I'm gonna go ahead and set up my my window. Whoops. Alright. And I can decrease this size. If you're gonna move right this this paper space right there, uh, you gotta click on that link right there that says move. Right, position it. Right. And I'm just gonna make it fit for right now. I'm just gonna Best. There we can right there. Right click, and the scale right now that that would be scale to fit. All right, right now that means that this does not have a scale. Right now, it, it's not a good practice, right? To be honest with you, and it can be actually a uh, pet peeve. So for some some professors, right, some some instructors, right, to print something at at, at not scale, right? Because uh, for the most part, right, you want to use this printed drawings to mark them and make develop the design or make, make some annotations right and you want to be able to use your scale your architectural scale and get some dimensions off of it when you have a no scale assigned to it well sometimes their, their drawings are, are pretty much useless in terms of doing that since i just want to have a record of the pro of the process right 
right now and, and be able to look at it as, as, as large as possible, that's where we're doing this, right? A custom scale to fit the page. But again, for the most part, you will get a scale uh, assigned but for the project, right? Um, and, and again, which we just talked about for that the 24 by 36, right? What was that scale? The one that worked for us? Correct, right after the three thirty seconds. Right, so so keep that in mind. That was the one that that seems to fit better. Right? Uh, again, one eight seems to work too, but probably even uh, there might be some issues printing too because it was pretty close to the edge of our paper, right? So again, once we have set up our custom scale and set up our page paper size, and right, go back to print. I can call this floor plans as well progress. However, I'll just change the size at the end. Right in 11 by 17, right? and we go ahead and click save, and it generates this. And this is the file that you want to take to wherever you're printing, right, and ask to print, right? and be the one uh, that that you submit, even. Okay, so I'll go ahead and close this guy's right there. Um. So elevations, right? I, I, I did get some questions about elevations, right? The, the reading covers it uh, a, a little bit, right? Uh, we're not getting yet into line weights necessarily, but uh, perhaps as you finish this up, right? Um, this can help a little bit. And I would highly recommend, right? A stop by, uh, you know, uh, Erika, right? Samira and Lisa's team, right? They already developed their, 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 their long which would be your, your east elevation, and it looks very nice. And they're actually doing a really, really nice job of projecting lines, right? And using your floor plan to generate these elevations, right? And I'll do this right here. I'm gonna make a copy of this drawings right here, real, real quick right here, right? So I'll make a copy right there. Uh, I wanna rotate this. I wanna see if it helps me, because uh, again, that's, that's, the, that's part of the, beauty right or working in the digital that you can do anything that you want right i mean you can rotate you can copy you can mirror you can move it's free right i mean you won't be you know wasting paper or energy or that much effort right uh and since we're working on the longer uh, elevation uh i can rotate it there or you can even right it's fair and it's valid especially as we're starting right now to actually rotate it this way right why well because perhaps our mind right it, it, it facilitates you know to be able I'm gonna turn my OSNAP right on and then my the guides layer on right for my line it might it might help you I mean and, and again remember right now you're training your brain yeah you're training we're training our, our brain in how to read these, uh, these drawings which are architectural drawings and not that they're hard to read but it just takes a little bit of acquainting with them, just getting familiar with them so uh, by all means, right? Definitely, you you are welcome to rotate them like this. Now, when you're doing your elevations as well, right? Since they are elevation, right? The floors are stacked on top of each other, right? So you should have your floor plans stacked on top of each other, right? Because there's some information that you're gonna get from the bottom floor and some information that you get from the second floor, right? Now we're working on the Z axis. Right? We're developing the, uh, actually that should be the, 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 the z-axis, I have it as the y, but it's because I'm working on the top view. But we're working on the z-axis for the elevation for the z-building. Right? Yeah, get it? All right. All right. So it helps, right, to start defining a, a plan, right, or a plane, I'm sorry, which is the ground. Now, what ground are you talking about, right? Because this building, it's, uh, well, it has more than one ground, right? You have the ground of this landing right there, which I can barely catch with this photograph. But then you also have all these monumental stairs going all the way down. And then you have the sidewalk, which is about the same, it's on the same level, right, as the parking space right there, right? Well, for me, it would be actually setting up the, this 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 uh, this plane right there, right? which is uh, you can call it the uh, the the breezeway, right? Where that that uh, exterior area is. As soon as you exit out of the lobby, right, setting that one up, right. 
setting that one up, um, we realize, right, uh, and again, based on your dimensions, right, that it actually oops, starts, right, some point, which I can, if I can find it, right, some of these images, right, where, where does that start, right, let me see, more photos, there we go, right, more or less, more or less it starts, uh, and, and you guys might already have this information, right, what, what do I mean, well, well, at some point, right, right now, this photograph, I mean, this photograph, this, this drawing right here, this corner in particular, it's this corner right here. So there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight or nine glass panels from what I get on the photograph, right? However, you guys did all your, your measuring exercise, right? And you guys should know for sure that it's like, wait a second, Munoz, right? It's actually one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's correct. Now, of course, I'm missing a column right here, but at some point, some point somewhere here, right? There's a line, for right now, I'll just add it there, right? There's a line there, right? That once we reach this point, we start going down right we start going down like this right so i can for right now use this point right there so i'll just go ahead and type trim right so that we can start seeing that better um those steps right did anyone get by any chance how how tall these steps are or high no all right they're they're, sh they're short. Right? They're like they're not normal size or uh, you know average size. Right? So you can copy. Right? Uh, I'm gonna say maybe uh, six inches, perhaps. Sure. Copy. Right. This guy right there. Uh, six inches down right there. Right. So I can start doing a poly. Nine, right go down six uh, let's say that the thread is about 12 inches right so we click there six inches down um say i'll do one more 12 inches right? um little trick right or, or um if we're drawing this stairs right i can just draw a little segment i can type copy right and then from there i can you know bring this right there um, of course, you know, counting how many there are, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I might have skipped some, right? Uh, but let's say I reach my landing, right? Which is another link right there. And we do that. And for right now, for the exercise, I'm just going to copy that, maybe bring it there, right? And this, guys, right? Uh, it starts being the your, your elevation. Now there is a line right from the edge of the, the building, right? So we can start projecting those lines there. And I'm gonna delete this right there. And there's another line, right, uh, which is that corner that we were looking at right now on our screen, right? That goes all the way down, right? But then there's also another line right coming from there and what is that line well it's the continuation of that little concrete uh ledge that you see there all right and we have that right there uh we also have uh some they're not planters but it's where, where the you know you see some people uh waiting for the bus or, or whatnot uh so they're about there's a line somewhere here Perhaps, and then there's a line somewhere there, right? So, so again, we're training our, our brain uh, in how to read this or how to generate this 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 uh, elevation drawings, right? And right now, notice that I am uh, uh, drawing everything in one single layer, right? And then it's easier for me to go back and um, you know assign the right layers. Uh, I, I guess for me it's faster, you know, just uh, start drawing with one single layer. Again, there's different practices. Now, uh, I'm setting up my my next building or my next uh, uh, portion of my elevations, which is the lobby. 
right? So again, from that line to this line right there, that's the width of that, uh, let's call it the, the classroom stairwell uh, entrance, right? And then this other width right here is the lobby, right? Now, question, which uh, uh, for you guys, maybe that you guys already uh, drew this, right? Uh, what's the height from this uh, breezeway area to that ceiling right there where those lights are, those columns die. What's what's that height? Huh? 10 4? 10 10? 10 10? I get a couple of answers. 10 2? Okay. Alright. So I can offset by 10 feet 2 inches. Right? That line right there. And then I can use this control, this uh, points right there to extend it there, right? And how how long do I extend it? Well, length of the building, right? So then from there I pull a line from where the building ends on the second floor. I can type extend, right? Select that as my target. Extend there. I can use trim, right? Clean that up. Nice, right? Now we know that this line right there eyes there right because the building doesn't at least that elevation does not take us all the way to to underground right and again i can project another line and by the way what we're doing it's called projections right you're projecting lines which is how um how originally floor uh, elevations are drawn right you first draw your floor plan right and then from there you project your lines to develop your elevation at least uh, this method, right? So I can bring another line from the end of the building, right? And it should match there. Now, what's the height, right? Let's say from that uh, ceiling, let's say all the way to the top right here of the of the building, of the second floor. Or even better, what's the height of the building from that landing right there to uh, the, the parapet? Oh, no. Oscar looks at me like, eh? <laughs> right? No, anyone? So no one's kind of figured the, the height yet? Liz, you have. What? <laughs> right? No, more or less? Is it less more than the 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 bottom height? Right, so we said, Hugo, let us know that it's 10 to 30 feet from where to where. Uh-huh. To all these top right here right 30 feet so I can do that I can do offset right select my ground plane right now now I type 30 feet enter right Draw that line right there and I know it's about time but I just want you guys to I want to at least show you guys the outline because once you see the outline by, by uh, uh, once you witness the outline you hopefully you're like oh, okay I get it right so then I go trim right can delete these lines right i don't need them and even better i can go back and use trim right because i that's what i don't need these lines either right so right i don't know if you see it now but we have a box right there boom it's a building right there right that's the that's the second floor all oh, the second floor right there that right it's your lobby and that right there is your um classroom entrance now from there right can draw a rectangle right or even better guys check this out I can type copy right and I can copy this columns from the floor plan I can just drag them right there you can select them and with its points on right points on I select this top points right there and guess what I can select them move it and boom right there those right there, all right, that column and that column right there, right, what was that, right, and then I can copy this right here, right, copy, I can bring, uh, for my first floor, of course, I can bring this columns right there, and I can bring them here, right, I can select them, points on, right, select such points, type move, right, and boom, bam. Right, got that right there, which are right, wait for it. right those columns right there. So you see, that's why, um, especially well, whether you're doing floor plans or elevations, you should have uh, photographs open. You should have your 
you know, your your background lines um, with you, right? Your notes, uh, but photographs really, really help, right? Because again, we're doing a representation. We won't get it 100% accurately, and that's really not what the assignment is, but a, at least a fair representation of what this this building looks like. Because I think even here, I need to still a, a little, a little go even lower. And then of course here, we also have uh, that slope right there. Uh, but from there, right? Again, on the first floor, right? I can even copy, right? Again, I can copy this guys right there and say this right there because these are your windows, right? You can bring them there, right? And I can start using this, right? To set up your your window frames, right? I'm not really sure how tall these are, right? Um, you know, it almost seems that they're touching the, the, the uh, but let me at least draw for you guys the um, the um, thermos um, outline. Right? So they say is, is that right there? So all of this right there, which is pretty much the entire width right there, is glass. Right? All of this right there is glass. And then from there, you're going to have right the the separation right of such glass. So let's say from there to there. Right to there, to there, to there, right, and you start having that, and right? you can start seeing that these are now the windows, right? So, so the idea is that 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 again, you look at this as a little puzzle, and you work as smart as possible, right? You're not really doing each drawing from scratch; you're actually borrowing information and copying it, projecting it from your floor plan. That's why it said that the floor plan is the guiding drawing. Right, that the guides everything else: exterior elevation, interior elevation, sections, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right. So uh, it's already time to go. Right. So so again, just just give it your best. Right. If you have any questions, make sure that you see me. Right. But but really, just uh, if if it helps you, right, rotate your floor plan so you can start seeing it from the ground. Remember, there there is no depth yet. You're not doing vanishing points. You're not doing. Uh, well, particularly that, right? This is not a perspective. This is just an orthographic drawing. So it should look flat, very, very flat, right? Until we add our line weights, line types, and of course, some textures and, and some colors. Yes? So so don't forget, right? Don't forget to uh, generate your 11 by 17. Hand in to me whatever you have today by 5 p.m., right? It's okay. This, this won't count as a great yet, right? It would just be progress, but I do want to see where we're at today, right? So please do submit that one uh, before you leave today. Black and white is fine, but again, just plan. Next class, Thursday, we do need to print 24 by 36, everything. Both floor plans, both elevations. It's probably going to be two, it's going to be two sheets. One of floor plans, one of elevations. Just bear in mind, there is some cost for that so that you can work it with your team and split that cost as well. Because we're going to be printing a number of them, right? Because it's going to be revision. So also I wanted to bring that up. Uh, again, there's the whole thing about no cash, carts only, paying somewhere else. So guys plan ahead on that. But again, you guys are doing really well. I mean, uh, I'm really happy to see the use of layers. Those are really important. Uh, and the use of projection, projecting lines, which you guys are doing as well. Right. So any questions, perhaps right now uh, it's still recording. I'll, I'll, I'll compile it right now and, and, and uh, upload uh, this online. But perhaps anything technical that, that I should cover before I stop this. No. All right, guys, I'm going to pause this right here.